Father Paul, we want to recognize your 14 years of service to NRVC as Executive Director. Through your dedicated leadership and vision, you have helped NRVC grow and expand its outreach, its programming, and its essential services to our members. And you did all this despite the one challenge that has plagued you since you became a vocation director. As you like to put it, I didn't know how to do vocation work, and yeah. um, it was a little intimidating. But you managed to cobble together a strategy in your own inimitable way, through storytelling, networking, and lots and lots of Italian dinners. The first time I met Brother Paul, well, he was playing Regis Philbin at the 2000 Convocation and putting anyone who had to give a report at the business meeting into the hot seat to answer questions about Catholicism. At first I thought, how hard can this be? But then I heard the first question, how many dicasteries are there in the Vatican? And I was a nervous wreck. By the time it was my turn, I looked at Paul and said, Regis, I am not going to know the answer to my question. You'll know, he assured me. And then, to my surprise, Regis elbowed me to clue me in on the right answer. And then I was able to give my report on vision, which started, if what you just put me through is anything like what you put discerners through, no wonder there's a vocation crisis. And that got a bigger laugh out of Regis, and we became fast friends. So Paul, thank you for all the fun and laughs you inspired in your years in vocation ministry. Hi Paul, I'm sorry I can't be there to celebrate this time with you, but happy to have the opportunity to have this short video message. There are so many gifts and qualities that you bring to vocation ministry um, and to religious life in general. One that I really appreciate is your sense of humor and your very often unintentional way of getting other people to laugh. So many times we say only Paul. For example, only Paul could come to Mardi Gras, survive the parades and the craziness of the crowds just fine, but twist his ankle walking back to our spot from Sunday morning mass. Paul, there's so many stories I could tell, but not here. Um, but just know that we appreciate you all that you are, all that you have been, um, and all that you do for us, and especially for me as a brother in Holy Cross. Love you, Paul. Brother Paul has a laugh that is hearty and contagious. If you're fortunate enough to be seated near him when he's laughing, you may need to brace yourself for the slapping and grabbing of your upper arm and shoulder as it becomes part of his infectious, hearty laughing. Once, when the two of us were laughing next to each other, tears came to my eyes. I'm not sure if they were caused by the pain of the slapping and grabbing of my arm or the funny thing that was said. On another note, I am forever grateful to Brother Paul for being a brother, for listening, for his vision and leadership, for encouraging inclusion and respect, and for being real. Thank you, Brother Paul. If there's one thing about Brother Paul that stands out for me, it's his ability to be a good brother. Uh, he was kind of like an older brother to me many times, and one time in particular, when I was going to the uh, Pollock Foundation's conference, he looked at my suit that I had just bought, and he said, oh, you know, kind of gently, you forgot to um, take out the stitching here. I don't think that's supposed to belong there. And it was kind of an awkward moment where I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot to do this. And uh, he just kind of quietly, you know, went and got a pair of scissors and he's like, you know, it's kind of like this won't do, you know, and, and he just took it out and I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but it's often in those little things, uh, those moments where he notices something and he changes it, like almost immediately, that I, I really believe that uh, he's like a big brother, but perhaps more importantly, uh, he's got my back. And, and I've seen him do that for so many other people. Thanks, Brother Paul. One thing about Brother Paul is that he always has a plan. He's up before the sun, and his interior planner is already working overtime. 
On the last day of our 2014 spring board meeting, Paul was in charge of getting three of us off to the airport. Plans were to leave the retreat center immediately after breakfast. When Paul didn't show up for breakfast, I figured that he was already miles ahead of us, waiting to pack the car and get on the road. So I collected my things and moved quickly to the parking lot. Predictably, the white rental car that he was driving was standing ready with a perfectly clean trunk open and waiting to be loaded. I thought, what a gentleman Paul is, always thinking of others, getting up early, opening the car for us. We are just so blessed. As my two other traveling companions arrived with their bags, I directed them to the open trunk and we loaded everything inside, including our purses and IDs. Strangely, Paul was nowhere in sight. A few minutes later, Paul came sprinting up the stairs, looking slightly disheveled and apologizing for oversleeping. We told him not to worry that everything was ready to go. So he quickly added his bags to ours, rearranging the entire contents of the trunk to make sure every last bag would fit just right. Satisfied, he slammed closed the trunk and went to open the car to let us in. Impatiently, he kept clicking the little black remote, but nothing was happening. Then, as if in a dream, we noticed the lights of a nice white car on the other side of the parking lot, flashing its lights in tandem with Brother Paul's incessant clicking. Paul then ran into Mass in hopes that he could get me to get the priest to announce during his homily for the person with a white vehicle to come to the parking lot. That wasn't going to happen. Then we prayed that the owner of the car would leave Mass early, right after communion. That didn't happen either. When Mass was finally over, we anxiously watched as each person filed out the church. Believe it or not, everyone cleared out and there were only two cars remaining, Brother Paul's rental and the one with our luggage in it. No owners to be found. We finally sent out our search party who found the owners having a leisurely breakfast with the friars. By the grace of God and some sleeping policemen, everyone made it to the airport, but with little time to spare. Well, Paul, thanks for giving us a memory that won't soon be forgotten. It's always an adventure with Brother Paul. Yes, Paul, you are ever the on-time, one-of-a-kind man with a plan who will continue to bring a smile of joy to our faces. As you pack up this chapter in your life, may you continue to unpack God's dreams for you, one good adventure at a time. And in your own car, please. God bless you. Hi, Paul. It's Brad Myers at the Conrad Hilton Foundation. I've been asked to say a few words about your enduring legacy in my life. And um, I was thinking back to standing on the roof overlooking St. Peter's Square uh, on the first evening of the first ever, as far as we know, international convening of vocation centers. One of your great ideas that uh, we did as part of one of these grants. And uh, we were talking about how vocation ministry doesn't really have an updated theology and talking and I said, well, yeah, I mean, it would be great if someone would do that. And you essentially said, well, why not you? And I said, yeah, yeah why not me? Um, and that entire evening, um, I realized that maybe this is my calling. And so I wanted to show you right here, this is a dissertation proposal, which has all but been accepted by a very prestigious university. So I'm gonna go do it. And that's the kind of guy you are. You see what's possible. You ask, why not? And you have the resilience and courage to overcome the obstacles that present themselves in your way. I'm very, very grateful for your influence in my life. It transcends the, the, the professional to the personal. And I promise to continue your legacy as one Polish guy to another who gesticulates like an Italian. Congratulations, Paul. I look forward to the next chapter. In his 14 years as NRVC Executive Director, Brother Paul has brought humor, healing, and unity within NRVC and among religious conferences. He has raised over $6.5 million in grants and donations for various religious vocation projects, including the recently established National Fund for Catholic Religious Vocations. 
He has been a friend and a brother to all. I think we can all agree with what Salt and Light's Deacon Pedro has to say about Brother Paul. Now you're the, the, the king of vocations, well, of I religious vocations. <laughs> um, you said that. Arrivederci, Brother Paul. Dio ti benedica. God bless.